the lodge feels a little colder than it used to. I'm not sure when things will feel safer. Of course. Are you ready? Looks like it's tag you're in, Andresia. Tag indeed, Sam. We will see you later. We'll get through this. When someone insults you, you want to just beat the shit out of them sometimes, but you don't. <laughs> well, not quite what I was thinking. Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Oh, Mateo, it's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But... Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh. Well, what's on both your minds? Oh. Yeah. How humanity comes together. Uh, how we are to love each other, even as our universe becomes even more complex. That's not exactly what we mean. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well, does it mean anything else? Something secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside. Even just the sound of his voice is... privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? We've lost people, Keeper. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And these Starborn, I take it they're different from the people of the settled systems? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet, the risk is made anyway. So you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path to discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. 
This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but maybe it's more. In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun, and he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave? Yes, something must be there. I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe the answer will become clear when we have more. The House of Enlightenment and Varun have versions of this story. Because I wasn't looking to find unity in the same sense you are. A fresh set of eyes might reveal the truth. The enlightened work out of the well here in New Atlantis, helping the poorest citizens find a better life for themselves. The rune worshippers are more enigmatic, but there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I visited her a couple of times. Hopefully she'll be willing to talk to you as well. I'll stay here with the keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more questions. has ended for now. It may not have been their intention. The lives of nearly every individual in the settled systems are so heavily influenced by what goes on in this building. I can't get enough of all the trees around. the original vision of the artist, or if they changed the design as they worked on it. all the time. Mast finally sent someone down there, but nothing's changed. A visitor? I have all the company I need. Jokes. You come to hear about Varun, like the guards, like the Keeper. 
The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. Yes, I have spoken to your keeper about this. I will tell you what I told him, and then you will leave me. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent, he does not hesitate. He cuts the Unbeliever down. But the Unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan, the Unbeliever says. Remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I have heard of no such thing. If it exists, it is a shadow that the Great Serpent casts to deceive the Faithless. Strength and conviction show your worthiness to the Great Serpent. The kill is not as important as showing there is no doubt. I grow tired of speaking. Leave me. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in the well. A lot of people in need. If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, you're not. Sorry. Can I help you? Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a unity pilgrim. But since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no, the Drifter asks them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of do that. Oh. 
Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Sorry, I couldn't be of more help, but that's about all I've got. Hope you find what you're looking for. You're back. What did you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories, like we thought? Hmm. Planets are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. What else did you learn? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. Was there anything else? Yes. What he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum. At four and one hundred twenty. That's where you'll find the Pilgrim's resting place. And from there, maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, you've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. 
In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it? And once you know, what will you do? Even the most objective scientist holds a belief that observation itself will be of benefit to humanity. You will be taking a similar part of yourself with you when you find the answer. Will that not color your perception of it? When one is lost, looking inward can help show the way. So you're committed to keeping yourself from seeing unity as anything other than a rational objective, a goal you're bound to reach. Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth. Someone made a concerted effort to survive here, and yet it would seem it would not work out.
do not like the cold. Stiffens the joints, lowers reaction times.
Security here is so visible. I suppose it makes people more comfortable. Most people, anyway. anything you need to offload trade authorities oh need some work done sure how about it I'm sure you can find something you like.
You should inspect your ship for heat leeches every couple land. I'm sure you can find something you like. Okay, no problem. name on it boss anything hey it's always a good day when you come around that everything
security. Give up now. Hey, I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together to say goodbye. You know, to Sarah. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. We can pay to fix the damages. Some things are irreplaceable. You can feel it, can't you? The lodge just feels empty. The lodge is still our home. So how much of a thrill is it? Is it everything you want? I gotta say, time has a way of just building on itself. But if he ever heard all the bullshit being talked about him these days, he'd flat out deck him. So how much of a thrill has it been traveling with the one and only last descendant of the great Solomon Co? Is it everything you imagined? Oh, bad time. Got it. Later, then.
Nice time in Aquila City.
I can speak for myself. Constellation Ship, you weren't invited to this meeting, but much of our conversation has been about you. It's only fitting you should join us. I will personally guarantee your safety, as long as you come in peace. And think of it as a ceasefire meeting. You're one shot at getting those answers you must desperately want. Introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. Yes, we did. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The Emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. Yes. Let's talk about what really matters. The Unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. You've really come a long way since the Welcome to Constellation speech, haven't you? I'm not who you think I am. This universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who stayed at the Lodge to protect the artifacts. You died on board the Eye while we held off the Hunter. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts, and they opened the way to the center of my universe, and the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the Unity. When I stepped into it, I became a Starborn. It's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. I have to. This is bigger than all of us. <coughs> all the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the Unity. In every universe, the Starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the temples. The anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The Emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts 
to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? It means I've seen thousands of universes, collected their artifacts, been to their temples, you have a small taste of their power, but it keeps going. You're learning. My other self wants you to walk the path he walks. To give up. To appreciate the universe you have. Easy for a person who has seen everything, done everything. I think you should see it for yourself. You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. in it. With artifacts come Starborn searching for them, fighting over them. I want a truce between all three of us. Give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want. Mine or the Hunter's. Yes. Let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules. Just remember, one of us isn't trying to judge you. That is all I ask. I hope you see what I have seen. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure they have gathered more information on the remaining artifacts in the fringes of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what you have learned. But I will leave that to you. 